Praise the Lord, and welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. This is the day which the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I need you to come on in and welcome to Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. Welcome to the last Sunday of the year 2020. I need you, as you are coming in, to just start putting your hands together and just start giving God the praise. Start thanking him and blessing his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. And it's because of the Lord that we are here today. It's because of the Lord that we've been blessed and that we're in our right mind and that we're able to gather together for worship on this Sunday morning. So I need you to put some clapping hands down in the comment section. I need you to send some hearts and some likes and just start blessing the name of Jesus as we prepare for worship on this Sunday morning. On behalf of our pastor, District Elder George Twilley, First Lady Lynette Twilley, and all the members here at Faith, Hope, and Charity, we say praise the Lord to everybody. And again, we welcome you to today's service. As we're starting our worship service, I need you to click like and click share. I need you to share this service all on your, across your timelines on Facebook. Start a watch party if you can. Uh, if you're on the phone, share it with somebody, the phone number. If you're watching by YouTube, my video ministry forward that link to somebody and let them know stay tuned for a dynamic message and for an awesome time in worship on this Sunday morning we're excited to have this opportunity to connect with you our family as we begin our worship service today we're going to start with a word of prayer and with our scripture reading for today praise the Lord everybody Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you right now, O oh God. Once again, O oh God, for your goodness and your mercy. Kind Father, we thank you, O oh God, for how you bless, O oh God, how you made a way, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, we praise you on today, O oh God, for another day you allowed us to see, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for carrying us through the year today, O oh God. Lord, you truly have been, O oh God, our shield and our buckler on today, Father. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for how you moved, O oh God, mountains out of our way, O oh God. Lord, we worship you, O oh God. You are excellent, O oh God. You alone are worthy of all the praise, O oh God. There's nobody else, God, that's higher than you today, O oh God. Father, we thank you today, O oh God. God, we give you a prayer of thanksgiving on today, O oh God, that you saw fit, O oh God. Lord, you picked us up from the muck and the mire today, O oh God. Lord, your name shall be praised, O oh God. The name of the Lord, the strong tower, O oh God, and the run, O oh God, they that run of, O oh God, Therein must be saved, O oh God. Lord, we thank you right now today, O oh God. Lord, you've been our shield today, O oh God. Lord, you've been our way maker today, O oh God. Lord, you've been, O oh God, long suffering today, O oh God. Lord, help us today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you right now today, O oh God. Lord, let your will be done today, O oh God, on earth, O oh God. As it is in heaven today, O oh God, let your will be done today, O oh God. Lord, we are facing, O oh God, many obstacles today, O oh God. Lord, help us today, O oh God, to say yes to your will today, Jesus. Help us to say yes to your way today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. We honor your name and your presence on today, O oh God. Lord, you have made us, O oh God, from the dust of the earth today, O oh God. You have called us unto your own today, O oh God. Lord, we say thank you. God, 
with a multitude, O oh God, of sins, O oh God. Lord, you've been gracious unto us, O oh God. You forgive us of our sins today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you today, O oh God. Sins that we've committed today, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God, for your namesake, O oh God. Do it for your glory today, O oh God. Lord, for we know, O oh God, without a struggle today, Jesus, there is no victory today, O oh God. We thank you for every struggle today, O oh God. Lord God, we thank you for every test, O oh God, every trial today, O oh God. O oh God, for we know that they come to make us strong, O oh God. Continue to look down upon us today, O oh God. Lord, you saw us, O oh God, before the foundation of the world, O oh God. And Lord, we say thank you today, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, O oh God, to forgive, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to forgive our enemies today, O oh God. God, you say that those that must suffer, O oh God, those that must reign with you today, O oh God. O oh God, give us compassion today, Jesus. Help us, O oh God, not to point the finger today, O oh God, but help us to, O oh God, cry out, O oh God, and say, what must I do, O oh God, to be saved? There's someone that's dying on today, oh God. There's someone who needs deliverance on today, oh God. Move by your power today, oh God. Oh God, save this world, oh God, from the untoward generation today, oh God. Help us, oh God, to call upon your great name, oh God. Help us, oh God, to do those things, oh God, that you will be pleased of today, oh God. God, you'll call us, oh God, from the wretched souls that we were today, oh God. Lord God, you filled us, oh God. You saved us with the Holy Ghost, oh God. God, you've taken us down in your name today, oh God. Oh, God, we thank you right now, oh God, for the blood that run, oh God, warm in our veins today, oh God. Help us right now, oh God, to call upon your great name today, oh God. Lord, look upon us, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. For, Lord, for we know, oh God, that the wages of sin is death today, oh God. Oh God, help us, oh God, to call out to you, oh God, in this time, oh God, of need today, oh God. You see the condition of the world, oh God. You see the condition of man today, oh God. Oh God, help man to stretch forth their hands hands, oh God. Lord, there's someone, oh God, who needs to know you right now today, Jesus, in the pardon of their sins, oh God. There's somebody, oh God, who's dealing right now, oh God, with anxiety today, oh God. There's someone that's dealing with right now today, oh God, suicidal thoughts, oh God. Oh God, going through the cracks and the crevices today, oh God. Satan, we bind you in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, have your way, oh God. Loose peace today, oh God. Oh God, give someone peace, oh God. Give someone understanding today, oh God. Lord, you can do it today, oh God. Break our fallow ground today, oh God. Break every fetter today in the name of Jesus. God, we trust you today, oh God. Lord, you are true and your word, oh God, shall not return back to you. Void. Now look upon, oh God, this world today, oh God. Oh God, the destruction of this world today, oh God, that's trying to destroy, oh God, your people today, oh God. Give them hope, oh God. Oh God, give them, oh God, victory beyond the grave today, oh God. Oh God, send forth your mighty hands today, oh God. You say you can be touched with the healing, oh God, of our infirmities, oh God. Oh God, give us peace, oh God. Give us faith today, oh God. Increase our faith today, oh God. Increase our capacity for you today, oh God. Oh God, strengthen this land today, oh God. God, you said you will heal, oh God, our people. You will heal, heal our land today, oh God. Heal, oh God, by your power today, oh God. We need you like never before today, oh God. There are people, oh God, that need you right now today, oh God. Oh God, you said something for, oh God, people that they will come to you, oh God. Lord, we're living in a dying world today, oh, but your word shall stand firm, oh God. Your word stands, oh God, on authority today, oh God. Lord, you are the sovereign God today, oh God, and we thank you right now today, oh God. We magnify your name today, oh God. Oh God, bless, oh God. You said the government shall be upon your shoulders and shall call you Emmanuel, oh God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, oh God. We thank you right now today, oh God, that you've been, oh God, good from everlasting to everlasting, oh God. You've been good from Genesis, oh God, to Revelations, oh God. Help us to cry out to you today, oh God. Oh God, give us peace in the storm today, oh God. Subject, oh God, even this pandemic today, oh God. Subject, oh God, even COVID-19 has to bow to the will of the Lord in the name of Jesus, oh God. God, you say pestilence will be here today, oh God. Lord, you said there will be a great falling away, oh God. Oh Lord, we say, we say peace in the middle of the storm today, oh God. Strengthen your people, oh God. Give us, oh God, a 
fortitude, oh God. Mortify our minds, oh God. Mortify our bodies today, oh God. Subject us to, oh God, to cry unto you today, oh Jesus. Lord, we thank you, oh God, because you found us, oh God, in the muck and marrow. We can't do it without you, Jesus. We can't do it, oh God. We can't please you today, oh God. Oh God, help us to be in your will today, Jesus. Help us to be mindful of God, what you've called us to do, oh God. Oh God, help us to come before you today, oh God, with strength, oh God. Give us peace, oh God. There's somebody, oh God, that's lost their joy, oh God. There's somebody, oh God, who's going through, oh God, that's struggling right now today, oh God. Oh God, you said that you will mount up, oh, we will mount up as wings, as eagles, oh God. We would run and not be weary, oh God. We would run and not faint today, oh God. Help us to proclaim your name today, oh God. Help us to, oh God, to abstain, oh God, this blood-stained banner today, oh God. For you said there would be a great falling away, oh God. Oh God, we cry out to you today, oh God. Send peace, oh God. Cover minds, oh God. Send peace to mothers, oh God, to fathers today, oh God. Oh God, bring families together today, oh God. Satan, we bind you right now that we're trying to, oh God, subject, oh God, your people, oh God, to not to, oh God, give you glory and praise, oh God. Subject our spirit, oh God. Help our extremities, oh God, to give you praise, oh God, for beyond what we may see, Jesus. God, you have been faithful, oh God, for a few things, oh God. We thank you for how you've healed of how you blessed today, oh God. Lord, it was you today, oh God. We give you glory. God, we give you praise today, oh God. Strengthen pastor today, oh God. Strengthen your man's service today. Every preacher today, every minister, every evangelist, every elder today, oh God. Oh God, help them to proclaim your word today, oh God. Oh God, as we go into a new year today, oh, help us to be prosperous in you today, oh God. Help us not to forget from where you brought us from today, Jesus. But you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise, oh God. Even though they've been, oh God, afflicted with COVID-19, oh God, give them a new song that the angels cannot sing, oh God. Bind the hand of the enemy, oh God, that will cause, oh God, them to not, oh God, cause them to not give you glory today, oh God. Step in and remove the void today, oh God. Lord, your name shall be praised. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and your name shall be praised, oh God. We thank you right now today, oh God. Move on today, oh God. Bless today, oh God. Those, oh God, that need a refilling on today, bring your service back, oh God, to your people, oh God. Bring your service back, oh God, to the church, oh God. Bring them back to where they first believe in today. We honor your presence today, oh God. Oh God, move right now, oh God. Satan, you are alive and the pit of hell shall be your portion. So open up, oh God, a window of blessings, oh God, that we won't have room enough to receive, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this day or today, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for what you've done, oh God, and what you continue to do, oh God. Now, Father, bless your people today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, have your way right now today. This has been a trying year, but help us, oh God, these next couple of days, oh God, to give you glory, oh God, to go in, oh God, giving you praise, oh God, even though, oh God, you take your loved ones, oh God, you defend us in our body, but God, you still, we're still here, oh God, to give you praise, oh God, oh God, hallelujah, God, we thank you right now today, oh God, that your word shall not return unto your void, oh God, oh God, every word that goes out, oh God, let it proceed, oh God, what you're going to do, oh God, oh God, help us in the struggle today, oh God, oh God, help the setback to be a great comeback, in the name of Jesus, God, you're able to heal, deliver, oh God, and set free, oh God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we honor you today, God, we give the glory and the praise, the honor shall be yours, oh God, the victory shall be yours, without a struggle, God, there is no victory, and we thank you right now, we honor your presence, we honor who you are today, oh God, Lord, we thank you for how you bled, suffered, and died on the cross, oh God, but in three days you rose again, oh God, help someone to remember who you are, oh God, help someone to remember that you are God, and there's nothing that's too hard for you to fix, oh God, you are the impossible, God, everything that you've done, oh God, is possible, oh God, Lord, we thank you, we bless your name, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Lord, your scripture reading for today is Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. 
I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. And may God's word be blessed to all those that hear in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. It's time for worship today. I know it's the holiday season, but we just want to remember that Jesus is the reason for this season. So let's take this moment and let's just begin to worship Jesus together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing unto him. Come. Yes, come on, let's worship him together. Come, let us Ah, uh, we enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. We come to celebrate the name of Jesus today. Ah, uh, we come to worship and bless his holy name. Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. Come, let us adore him. He's a wonderful Savior and a beautiful King. There's nobody quite like our God. Hallelujah. Come on and help me call his name today. Emmanuel. He's a king of kings and the Lord of lords. Emmanuel. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Emmanuel. He's the king of Zion, Judah's lion. Emmanuel. The bright and morning star. Emmanuel. And he's worthy of all of our praise today. Emmanuel. Oh, come on and let's help me just bless his name. Don't you love him? Have he been good to you? We worship your name. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship your Lord. We worship you. Oh, come on, just lift up your hands and just bless him. Hallelujah. Come with me today. We've got something on our hands to do. Come on, let's just bless Jesus wherever you might be. Just take this chance, step away from your computer, step away from your chair, and just lift up your hands and, and just give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Oh, we come to adore him. Ah, just to behold the beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. Hallelujah. Come on and help me call that great name, Emmanuel. God 
worship him today. Oh, come on, lift up your hands and bless his name. Hallelujah. Just fill your mouth with worship unto him. Glory. Yes, God, we come to worship you today. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Come on, bless Emmanuel. celebrates her birthday today. Please join us in wishing her a happy and blessed birthday. All members are requested to participate in our nightly prayer assignments as we seek the Lord for healing, deliverance, and justice in our nation and for the world. We are in prayer each night from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Prayer assignments are as follows. Mondays, last names beginning in A through E. Tuesdays, last names beginning in F through J. Wednesdays, last name beginning in K through O. Thursdays, last name beginning in P through T. Fridays, last names beginning in U through Z. And all members are asked to participate on Saturdays and Sundays. Please note, that this week's Bible study session has been canceled. Please enjoy the holiday with your family and loved ones. Faith, Hope, and Charity and Grace Apostolic Church will sponsor a joint virtual watch night service as we welcome the new year. Service will be held at 8 p.m. and at 11 p.m. will be streamed on Facebook, YouTube, and on our website. Members are encouraged to send pictures of special accomplishments and milestones during the year, as well as New Year's greetings, which will be shared during the service. Please contact Elder George Twilly Jr. for additional details. Join us next Sunday at 11 a.m. for Christian Education. 
our weekly Sunday school lesson will be conducted on Zoom. Our worship celebration will begin at 12 noon. Services are streamed live each week on our website, YouTube, and Facebook. There is a word for you. Dr. Brandon Jones is a contributing writer for the current edition of the Christian Outlook magazine. Dr. Jones shared a piece entitled, Political Considerations for Kingdom Citizens. Visit the PAW e-store at pawinc.org to purchase your copy today. For additional updates during the week, please visit the church website at www.faithhopecharityministries.org or our social media pages. Please govern yourself accordingly and have a blessed week. We are so glad that we've had this opportunity to connect with you on today, the final Sunday of the year 2020. We pray and trust that you have been blessed by our service thus far as we continue in worship today. Since this is the last Sunday, not just of the month of December, but also of the year 2020, as you know, we've been studying each month a memory verse that we have committed to memory as we have been studying from our theme for this year, which has been totally committed. And our final verse that we have been studying for the year 2020 comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. So as we are here in the final Sunday of the year, let's uh, make Pastor proud. He can't see you right now, but why don't you uh, just take a moment and let's quote our verse for the month of December. The scripture says, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 12. As pastor has let us know, we have new scriptures that we will be memorizing for the year 2021. So stay tuned, and let's be blessed as we continue to grow in the word of the Lord. All right, it's offering time for us here at Faith, Hope, and Charity, an opportunity for us to worship the Lord with our giving. God has been faithful to us. We have been so blessed by the Lord that he's allowed us to be, uh, as the scripture says, it is the Lord who gives you the power to get wealth. And with that power, we're able to come and present our offering and our tithes unto the Lord. So you'll see on your screen the ways in which you can share in today's offering. You can give via Cash App, and you can use our handle, which is dollar sign, FHCM on Cash App. On Givelify, you can just search for Faith, Hope, and Charity Ministries. If you're on our website today, you can visit there, www.faithhopecharityministries.org. Click on uh, the link for donations, and you can use PayPal to uh, process your donation using a Visa or a MasterCard. Your final option is you can give via postal mail. You can send a check or a money order and address it to 3804 Endicott Place, Springdale, Maryland, 20774. So again, through Cash App, through Givelify, through the website, or through postal mail, you can share and be in a blessing in today's offering. And again, as always, we thank our members who have been faithful in giving throughout this year, even with us having virtual worship services, you have still been faithful in sending in your tithe, your offering, contributions to our building fund, supporting our ministries and our auxiliaries, and supporting even our 10-year celebration. Uh, we thank you for your support. As you know, this is the end of the year 2020, and so we do want to remind you, uh, please make sure you get your final contributions in for tax purposes by December 31st. By December 31st, if you're sending it by postal mail, make sure it's uh, postmarked by December 31st. If you're giving online, make sure you give by December 31st at 1159. We have an opportunity to give at watch night, but we just want to put you in remembrance now. Make sure you get your final givings in for this calendar year uh, by December 31st. So we thank you again for your offering, and we pray the blessings of the Lord upon you in Jesus' name. All right, it's time for us to receive the word on the Lord for today. The scripture says that man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here we are, the fourth Sunday of December. A pastor has been blessing or has allowed us to hear the ministry of others throughout this month. We heard from Bishop Fields, we heard from Evangelist Langham, we heard from Dr. Jones, but today, as we close out the year 2020, we get to hear the voice of our pastor. So I need you to sit in prayer and to sit attentively as our pastor shall come and declare the message for us on today. If you have not clicked share yet, this is a good chance for you to click share and start your watch party as Pastor Twilly shall come. You know what to do. In the comment section, I need you to type preach pastor. Let's encourage him as he comes. Let's receive at this time the pastor and founder of Faith Open Charity, District Elder George Twilley Sr., in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Elder George. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together and give God some glory. He's worthy of a praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Put those hands together. You know how to click on. Come on, clip, clap, 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 clap. He is worthy of a praise he's worthy he's worthy he's so worthy of a praise we're thankful to the lord for this opportunity to be before you once again and we are just ecstatic to know that you have joined in with us throughout the year it has been stated this has been an unprecedented year unprecedented year is time when people are uh, locked in shut in many are sick but God is still good. God is still working things out for our good. And we're just rejoicing at what he is about to do. We are thankful for this opportunity once again to just speak a word of life to you. And we're going to be talking today again from our overall theme. We're going to be going back to the book of Romans. Book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And we're going to speak to your life to your liking tonight, uh, today, this day, this last Sunday in uh, December, and we are believing that the Lord has a word for you. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to be reading out of the King James Version. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and all God's people say amen to the reading of his word. I'm going to read this also uh, from the Life Application Bible. I, I thought this was very uh, unique in the way it was worded, but at the same time, I found it to be very helpful uh, in the delivery of the message today. It says, therefore, I urge you, brother, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We want to extract out of the King James Version, however, the the theme today, our talk topic for today, and it's out of the second verse there, and it's transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I have a subtopic in this, and it's going to be, I'm in my right mind. I'm in my right mind. You have to get there. I'm in my right mind. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I have a new mindset. Tell him right now, I have a new attitude. I have a new mindset. I'm not thinking like the old George. I'm not thinking like the old you. I have a new mind. God's given you a new mind. 
it is transformed into a new set of mind thinking. You are now a new creature, so you might as well come on and have a new attitude, a new mindset in what you're doing. When you think about uh, this mindset, this, this mind thing, it's a mental process. It's a process where you start thinking and your mind starts moving and your mentality is so different. But we have to get to a point where we know that the old us was thinking old things, old ways, not really considering what God was doing and what God he wanted us to do in, to do in our lives. We find here, when we open up this particular chapter of Romans, we see he says, I beseech you, therefore. He's saying, I urge you. We read it. He says, I appeal to you. I want you to make a change. I want you to go back and look what he wrote in the first 1 through 11 chapters when he was talking about the mercies of God. The mer mercy of God. God has been merciful to us. Just look back over this year. God has blessed, blessed, and blessed. There have been many negative things that we can say, but we can still say that God has been in control. God has taken us through many tests and trials and tell somebody, I'm still standing. I'm still here. I'm still here. I still have the vocal cords to magnify him. I still have the activities of my limbs. I can still raise my hand. I can still shout, thank you, Jesus. It is because of the mercies of God. There's nothing that I've done to deserve this but God's mercy. I can count on it each and every day when I get up. God's mercy brings us through to this day, to this time, his mercy. So when he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, he gives us some instructions. He tells us, and this is one of the greatest things, we just celebrated the birth of Christ. We just had an opportunity to worship and celebrate baby Jesus. We had an opportunity to say, happy birthday, God. Thank you, Jesus, your birthday. And what better present can we give but to ourselves, to him? Give ourselves, giving our own selves to him. A living sacrifice. And he identifies the sacrifice. He says, it's holy, acceptable unto God. And he uses a theme that says, it's just your reasonable, it's just your reasonable service. Then when you look at that thing, reasonable reasonable service or oh, it's not an ordinary thing a reasonable your intellect it just makes sense when someone does something good for you it just makes sense for you to give yourself to them anytime somebody blesses you it's just reasonable for you to say thank you when anybody does anything good in your life it's just a reasonable act for you to be appreciative appreciative it's your reasonable service. Reasonable service. Reasonable. And that's what he created us to be a service to the world. It's just your reasonable service. To be able to share God's gospel with the lost. To be able to share the things, the substance that you have with those that don't have. It's just your reasonable service. It's a sacrifice, yes, but he's not looking for animals and the blood. He's looking for a living creature, you and I, to give service. Back in the Old Testament, the priests, they would bring the sacrifice, a dead sacrifice. But God wants a living sacrifice out of you. It's just your reasonable service. After all he's done for us, hallelujah, who wouldn't praise a God like this? Did he not wake you up this morning? Did he not clothe you in your right mind? Did he not give you the activities of your land? Did not he give you the breath of life? Did not he stand with you when you were lost and didn't know where to go? When everybody else turned their back on you, God was right there on your side. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. And it's just your reasonable service to magnify him, to worship him. And he tells us to be not conformed to this world. Don't fall in the trap of following the things of this world. This world will kill you, I'm going to tell you right now. 
It'll take you out. If you sit here and listen to the things that are going on in this world, you will know what to do. There is so much bad information given out there in this world. But I'm talking to you today about the world that I'm trying. I'm looking for the Heavenly Father's world. I'm looking to go someplace where I can trust in everything he tells me. He tells us to lean not to our own understanding. He tells us in all thy ways. Look, what he wants to do is to acknowledge him. Look, he's the one that can bring you through every test and every trial. He'll take you through. You just got to trust him. You got to lean on him. You got to depend on the God of your salvation. God has been too good to us. Look, we're going to be almost 365. Was this a leap year? 365 days. Pretty soon we're going to be closing out this year. But I, by faith, believe that I'm going to make it in to 20 and 21. How about you? I believe by faith that I'm going to make it over in 20 and 21. And so for that reason, I can give God praise. For that reason, I can magnify him. For that reason, I can glorify the God of my salvation. Because he's been too good to me. The psalmist in 103 kind of gives us reason for all the mercies. He talks about, he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that within thee, bless his holy name. He goes on and says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his, he gives us reason for all the mercies that God has done. He gives us reason to thank him. God is so awesome that he never forgets the things that we need. He provides for us on a daily basis. Have you ever been accused or have you heard of a brother or sister being accused of being brainwashed? Ah, it, it usually happens when, you, when you're really talking to someone and telling some, about someone about something that happened to you and you're trying to really explain it and they'll just tell you, oh, you out of your mind. That didn't really happen. And, and you'll fall into a trap. They'll tell you that you've been brainwashed, that you think you can, you don't have to do this and you don't have to do that. But I'm telling you right now that you got to follow the instructions that God has given us. God is looking for obedience. I'm telling you right now. He's looking for obedience. So every time when we, when we read the Bible or we listen to a preacher preach, <laughs> oh, we, our minds, are, are, they're changed. They're cleansed. From negative corruption, negative influences of the world. Romans 12 and 2, it tells us to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And he gives us the instructions on how to accomplish that. It's a renewed mind. Before you can come to Christ, our attitudes, our thinking must be changed. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You got to change the way you act, the way you think. That's the changed mind that he's talking about. You can't come with the old you and look for something new unless God changes you. You have to be open to God's changing hands. You have to be open to the instructions that God gives you. Look, Paul puts it in his when I would do, when I would do good, evil was right there. Look, I've come to find out that my biggest enemy many times is not Satan. My biggest enemy is sometimes me because I'll turn my back. I think I know everything. The enemy will just play on my stupidity. The enemy will play on the things that I find to be right or I find to be wrong. He'll, I'll give him the information. I'll give him the, the, uh, the insight on how I feel, and he'll play right on it, and he'll make my mind go into places that it shouldn't. But I'm telling you, when, when I would do good, I end up doing the evil because I allow myself to get captured by the enemy. I give the enemy <laughs> no respect. When I find myself falling into the trap, it's because I opened up my big mouth and given him some ammunition. He's not my biggest fear. I'm my, I got to watch what I do. God is watching me. Look, the enemy is out there, but God is watching to see what I do. He is not trying to entrap me. He's not, God is not like that. He gives us a choice. He gives us the ability to make a choice. 
in this particular scripture, he's not forcing us to be transformed. He's given you the opportunity to get a renewed mind. He's given you the opportunity to change your way. We're talking about being totally committed in 20 and 20. Total devotion to God. In order to have a total commitment or to be totally devoted, you have to have a relationship. I'm talking to somebody. A total relationship with the Father. You can't just do any and everything you want. You got to trust him enough, even in the good days. Look, over the last 11 or 10 months, we've had good days. We've had heels to climb. We had weary days and weary nights. But when we start looking back where God has brought us from, I got no complaints. Because God's been good to us. That's the end result. He's been good. But it takes a renewed mind to get there. We'll bring up all the negative. Well, I lost this. I haven't worked. I'm about to be put out. Those things do happen, but if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, if you just believe that God's got your back, he'll work it out. Job put it this, though he slay me, yet will I. You got to have a renewed mind. It's just not, that's it. everybody can't think like that. When I'm down and out, when I've got boils all over my body, when I'm sick and when my wife has turned her back on me and my kids are gone and all my cattle and all my livestock and everything that I have. But when I think of the good, that's what the young lady, when I think of it, Job said, I'll trust it. Everything, I'm still going to put my trust in God because God is going to bring me out. That is a renewed mind. It's a new attitude. It's totally different. It is unrealistic, really, for some people to think like that. But it's our reasonable service. That's what God wants. He wants us to have a renewed mind. I'm telling you right now, I got a renewed mind. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I was out of my mind before. Back in the old George, I was out of my mind. But now I'm in my mind. I'm in my right mind. I trust him. I can lean and depend on him. Oh, I love him. I'm telling you right now, I love him. I love him. I love him. Everything that he, he continues to walk with us. He talks with us. You know the songs going through the garden. Come on, alone. He, come on, he talks to you. He gives you everything. Didn't you ever get to a point, or have you haven't, I'm going to tell you, I know you have, to a point where you didn't, you were ready to give up. You were ready to throw in the towel. But then God sends a word. A word of life, a word to change your whole mindset, to change your attitude, to let you know that I'm right here. All he does is speak a word. That's what the centurion said. Just speak. The word of God is strong. The word of God is true. The word of God brings life to things that are down and out. But you got to trust him. You got to believe in him. You got to go by what the word says, what the God, what God is telling you. Titus tells us that we are not saved by our works of righteousness, but by the washing of regeneration, which comes by the word of God and a daily renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's through the blood of Jesus. That's where we get it from. There are many battles that we're going to fight. There are many battles that you know that have been out there that they've been fighting for years. I remember when I was in the military. I went in during the Vietnam War. Well, way before the Vietnam War, there were other wars. There were wars between the states. There were wars between Korea. There was World War I and World War II. And if you go back and look in the Bible, there was the war in Jericho. If you keep going, there was a war in Ai. There were wars and many wars and many people were taken out. But God, he brought them through. He still worked things out. He still brought us to a point where you could be victorious. That's what he's talking about here. You want victory today? You got to have a renewed mind. God will give it to you. It's a God thing. It's a God thing. Ha. Ah, you have to step out of the old you and come on into the new mindset that God has placed you in. All those battles, there are still some battles that are being fought right now every day in our life. You can't get up in the morning without hearing the bad news that are happening. You can't get past noonday without hearing some of the disastrous things that are happening in this world. Do not be conformed to this world. It'll kill you. 
I'm telling you, I'm looking for tomorrow. I'm looking for the day when God comes. Look, he's going to crack the sky. Look, the enemy hasn't realized that. And if he continues, if he reads the book, he'll find that he's already been defeated. He was defeated at Calvary. That's why we can stand the day to say we are victorious in Jesus. We have the winning hand. We got Jesus on our side. So as we continue to fight these battles, as we continue to go into war, we are victorious. Tell somebody you're a winner. You don't have to worry about it any longer. If there's ever a battle that we must fight and a victory that must be won, this is it. Don't get all bogged down. Don't believe that your enemy is greater, that, 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 that Satan is greater than anything that you come up against. He's not. God has given him the ability to do what he does. But God has equipped you at the same time to withstand the battles of the wiles of the devil. You can get through this. You can win. Tell somebody, I'm a winner. I'm going to get out of this. I can make it because I have a new mind. I have a renewed. I'm in my right mind. See, before I could, I would think about being defeated. But now I don't think about being defeated. I, be, I think about winning. I think about who is on my side. Anybody know they got the Lord on us? If it had not been, come on, church. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? You can make it. You can make it. There's no battle that you can't win. There's nothing that you can't do. That's why I so rejoice when I understand how, what he's talking about, that I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things. It's through him. I can do. Come on here, somebody. You need to start reciting that in your spirit as we prepare to go into 20 and 21. I can do all things through Christ. But the big piece of it, you can, but will you? Uh-oh. Will you do it? It's a choice that you have to make. I'm going to go through because I have the right mind. I got the mind that God has given me. I've got a new attitude. I got a renewed spirit. I got a renewed walk. I got a renewed everything that God wants me to do. He wants to renew some things in us in 20 and 21 because we're going to be overcomers. Overcoming. The wows. All the stuff that we went through last year. I'm about to come overcome it. Our scripture for 20 and 21 is out of John, 1 John 5, verse 4 and 5. It says, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. That's where our victory is. Look, I'm telling you right now, you can, we're going we to make it. We're coming because our mind, we got a renewed mind. We've got a renewed attitude. We know that we are on the winning side. Look, I'm telling you, it's the best thing in the world. When you're prepared for what God has blessed you with, we've been studying all year about the gifts of God. When you read Romans 12, it talks all about that. When you get the right mindset, you're ready for all the gifts that God has put in the body. Tell somebody, I'm equipped to go forward. I'm ready to serve. That's what he's telling us to do. Be ready to serve the lost. To be ready to do things that God has called the church to do in these last days. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to stand in this day and time and fight the good faith, of the battle of faith. The fight, the fight of faith. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to battle this thing. I tell you. It's amazing how we have to look at things today. Look up and see what the many things that God has for you. I'm locked up in this mindset. There are secrets. And you know you have secrets that nobody knows. There are secrets. There are things that you don't even want to come out. And I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter with God. He wants to give you a new mindset so that you don't have to worry about that. It's time to stop looking. I know he tells us to move, go to the, you got to point out there. You got to push yourself. You got to strive for that spot, that place that God has for you. But getting those things that are behind. And you got to push yourself to go. I'm 
moving to that perfect spot that God has for me. I remember the prodigal son. He was caught up in all the things of this world. He was caught up in having a good time. He was caught up in all the women, the big houses. Didn't say that about the big house, but he got caught up in the world. So I'm thinking he took his money and he, he blew it. But the Bible lets us know that when he came to himself, when he took time out, he got a renewed mind. He knew to go back home to the Father. How many of you are ready to go back to the Father? How many know that you're now getting your mind set that you're ready to go back home to the Father? And what I love about Jesus, I love about the Father, he was standing there, he could see him from a distance. And with open arms, he brought him back into the fold. That's what God is telling you right now with the right mindset. The prodigal son could have been still eating with the pigs. Sometimes you have to go to your lowest point. And when you get down there, you'll come to yourself. Well, I'm telling you, you don't have to always do that. God has given you, just reading this scripture, Romans 12, that a transformed mind puts you in a position for great success. God wants to bless you. He wants to move you to another level. The promise is unto you. All you have to do is grab it and run with it. Anybody feel like running with promises that God has given you? Anybody feel like following the leader, following God, because he's got something greatly in store for you? I'm telling you right now, you got to trust him. And when we try to understand the things that God of God with the natural mind, it messes all up. We'll always come up short. You can never outthink him. You can never get to a point where you think you know it all. When you try to understand, understand the things of God, the Bible lets us know that you're carnal minds. Come on, y'all can't think like him. It's enmity with God. It's an opposition. You never could get it. But God wants you to have a renewed mind today. He wants you to have a new attitude. He wants you to have a new walk. He wants you to have a new talk. He wants you to be able to bless people. He wants you to be not like the rich ruler that loved all he had, not willing to give to those that are less fortunate. He had everything else. He says, what are you doing? He says, I've done those commandments. My small, I grew up with that. He says, well, give all you have and follow. The renewed mind tells you to follow him. The renewed mind will tell you, just like Peter, just beckon me to come and I'll walk. <coughs> That's what the renewed mind does. It makes you do the undo unordinary things. It'll make you or push you and lean and help tug you to, to know that you can do all things through Christ. Can you imagine walking, stepping out on water? That's not logical. <laughs> that, the average person wouldn't do that. But the person with the renewed mind of Christ, a God-given gift, a new attitude, that when you really trust him, you're willing to step out on faith, believing that God will hold you up, that God will take you through. Anytime somebody tells you to walk around a wall, a Jericho wall that was built as a fortress that nobody could get in. It was built to keep folk out. Yet he tells you to walk around and be quiet. And then he tells you to shout. And the walls come tumbling down. And you didn't have to lift a gun. You didn't have to lift an arrow. You didn't have to do anything. The land was yours. That's not logical. But do God. If you do it, God will bless you. It was just your reasonable servant. God showed Israel throughout the years that he had their back. Well, he has shown us throughout the year that he's got our back. It just didn't happen this year. 
But it may have been more blatant this year than any other time. Because we have seen some hard times. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. But it was through it all. The songwriter, she said, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God could solve them? It was through it all that I've learned to trust him. It was through it all. It's not reasonable. It's irrational. It's crazy. Whatever you want to call it. But he said it was your reasonable service. Whatever you do. Get a new mindset. Look at your neighbor says, tell him, I got a new attitude. I got a new mind. I am putting those old things behind me. And I'm pressing towards the mark. That's what God wants us to do. To take time out and to press toward the mark. Our text was a passage of me, for many of us that we quote. And I want to look closely at a couple of the words Paul said, a living sacrifice that we present our God as our reasonable service. I want to go back there and, and many have preached it. I've done it myself. And, and what we have to really understand that God is looking for uh, uh, us to be reasonable. It's not extreme. It's not excessive. We have to construct, we have to construe this verse to mean something that's really what it's not. It, it wasn't in imposing any hardship on us. It wasn't imposing any unrealistic or unusual things, although it may sound that way. But what God was saying to us, and this is where I, I really found it very interesting. The English version of it, it talks about reasonable like, like that, to think it's something being unrealistic. But the a Greek version of it, it puts it into a different aspect altogether. The Greek makes it sound so much differently. The Greek puts it out to, to where you know that you you, you don't feel like it's unrealistic. The Greek put it out there that you feel like that, that it's your, a service that is, it, you're entitled to do, that you should be doing. Reasonable could be a, a, a better translated uh, as rational. Uh, having having a, a reason or an understanding that God, something that God wants us to do. Service. God's service. It's a choice. We have to make the choice to be a servant. We have to make that choice to do it. It's a choice based on our reasonable and our, our, our abilities to follow God's call. I told you we started studying the gifts, but he's given all of us different gifts for the body, for the kingdom, for such a time as this. And your reasonable service, your reasonable attitude is to follow God's word, follow the gifts that God. Anytime somebody give you a gift, you should be grateful and thankful and exercise that gift. We I just I said it, we just finished celebrating Christmas. We just finished celebrating the birth of Christ. Well, what better thing to do than to present a present of yourself to the God of salvation? What better thing to do than to give yourself to God? He wants you to have a renewed mind, have a new attitude, to really change your insight. It is the decision that we battle with day in and day out. Serving God is about choice. Choices only mankind has given the ability to make. Choices that you must make individually. God told Israel, behold, I set before you a day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God. And I command you this day... And it's a curse, a curse, if you do not obey the commandments. It's your choice. Then what you going to do with it? The reasonable choice for you to do is to serve God. The reasonable thing to do is to rely on God because God is giving you everything that you need. He says, you want life? It'd be reasonable for you to obey the commandments that I give you. Look, I'm telling you right now. And when you make the choice to follow Jesus, when you are in your right mind, it's a reasonable service. It is a rational decision prompted by faith. 
God's Word, unless you feel like you're being swayed any kind of way, you've got to look at the experiences that you've gone through and know that if it had not been for Jesus, that God brought you through. A decision based on emotions and appeals, they seldom take you through. Anytime you go on emotions, you can look for failure. You can look to fall. When emotion is gone, so is your commitment. But when you're standing on God's word, when you trust him to the end, you withstand all the fears that come in your life. I'm telling you right now, this is why Paul said, be ye not transformed. By the renewing of your mind. A life changing power of repentance rests in the fact that we've changed or renewed our mind. We must win the battle over carnal thoughts, carnal things, dormant things in our mind. It is our ongoing process to trust God on a daily basis. Even moment by moment, we must renew our mind. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought of obedience of Christ. This is a reasonable service. This is a service God of God because he, we chose to do it. It's something that you choose and I choose to do because it makes sense. It's not because of emotion. It's because God has just been too good. So when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can see what God has done and what he's brought us through. In 2020, I want you to know today that there have been some times when you might have been ready to throw in the towel. But I'm telling you now, if you did, go pick it up. Because God wants to take you to another level because of your renewed mind. There are green pastures, and we're about to be able to sample the grass. We're going to be able to go over it as the sheep of God. There are things that are about to change. I don't know about you, but I see a light at the end of the tunnel. I see green pastures at the end of all this. But it takes a mindset to be able to get up. Stop holding your head down low. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors, because the King of glory, look, he's about to come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord. Come on, come on, talk to me, church. He's standing there, armed and ready to help you make it through. But you have to have a renewed mind in order to be able to make it through. You can't throw in your towel. The old mind is not going to make it. The old attitude is not going to make it. The old you is not going to make it. God is looking for a re reasonable service from you. A renewed mind. Transform. Change. That's what a transform. You know how those little kids have those games. Transform. Transform. You're not the same person. You have to be ready. You have to prepare yourself. Present yourself. Anybody feel like presenting themselves the best they could be? Look, when a person is an athlete, he goes out, he prepares himself on a daily basis to win the Olympics. He works hard at his task. If he falls short this year and didn't make the Olympic team, next year he's going to come back and he's going to be in a better position because he prepared himself. He's given all he had to be better at the sport that he is. Well, I'm telling you, the sport that we're in is saving souls. We, the sport that we're in is being a service to God. The sport that we're in is being a, a, an obedient servant of God. And to help to get to that spot, you've got to look for improvement each and every day. Every day that we get up, we're looking to be better at what God has called us to be in these last days. I'm looking to be a better child of God in 2021. I'm looking to be a worker in the kingdom far greater than I've ever been before. I've got a new mindset. I've got a renewed mind. And all I can say, is that's just my reasonable service. It's not rational, but it's my reasonable service. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think of all that he's done for me, when I look back over my life, I praise him. Yes, I'm a cancer survivor. God did it. Ha! Huh. I was a sinner saved by grace. Come on, he did it. 
And that's why I magnify him, because he's been too good to me. He's been an awe. Oh, he's been a father to the fatherless. He brings you out of all the problems that you've had if you're willing to obey his word. Church, prepare yourself because God wants to change your mind. He wants to take no out of your mouth. No to him, but no to the world. You can keep saying no to the world, but to him, you just want to follow him. He wants to change your whole mindset to whether you now are ready to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. This is what a soldier does. He don't really think about the outcome. He just goes off into battle because he knows that's the command that was given to him. He says, the commandments I give unto you. He wants us to love one another. He wants us to show love beyond measure. He says, because this is how people are going to know that you're my disciples, because you have love one to the other. That's what God wants. He called it a new commandment. But I'm telling you right now, today, wherever you might be sitting, this day, transform your mind. Transform your mind. Renew it. Do not conform to the world. Do not become captive to the things that are happening around you in this world. Get a new mindset. And the mind, the set that you have is the mind of Christ. Philippians, it says, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm trying to get the mind of God. Church, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And let's look for a wonderful 20 and 21. One like we never have. A year going into a new year like we've never done before. Because God has great things in store for us. But it's for his people. It is for those. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you just start to thank the Lord for speaking to us today through this message from our pastor? Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord for sharing with us these instructions as we prepare to close out of the year 2020. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him for speaking to us and for giving us so oh, an opportunity to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We thank the Lord for Pastor Twilly speaking to us and sharing with us from the scriptures today, concluding the year 2020 and uh, re-emphasizing re our focal thought for this year of being totally committed unto the Lord. Today, as we close our service, to, uh, we want to be able to extend an opportunity for those who are watching. If you need to know the Lord, as your savior if you need to know him in a more personal way if you need to experience the transformation that comes by a renewed mind today we invite you to call our church you can call and reach us today the number will be on your screen it's 240-334-0121 again 240-334-0121 you can even send an email to faith hope charity ministries at verizon.net so give us a call today send an email today inbox us if you're watching on media and let us know we would like to be able to pray with you we would like to be able to counsel you and lead you in an experience where you can be transformed where your life will be changed by the renewing of your mind. If you would like prayer today, if you need to uh, be baptized in the name of Jesus, again, please reach out to us by email or by phone. And one of our ministers, someone will be in touch with you to receive your call and pray with you and believe God on your behalf. We want to thank you again for joining us today for our worship service. We pray that you've been blessed by the word, by the worship, by the things that you've heard and that you experienced in worship today. We want to invite you to join us again for our watch night service as we fellowship with our diocesan, Bishop Ernest Pendleton, and the Grace Apostolic Church family 
this Thursday at 8 p.m. and also at 11 p.m. Join us for worship as we close out the year 2020 and go into the year 2021. But as we close today's service, we're going to have one final prayer with you as we dismiss. Father, in the name of Jesus, again, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, God, for the word that we have received today and for what you have shared with us from the scripture. Father, we pray, oh God, for those who view today's service, Lord. We speak a blessing into the lives, into the homes of every viewer today, of every listener, oh God. Father, we pray for those who need to experience a transformation in their life. Father, we pray for those, oh God, who have been bound by circumstances, who have been bound by uh, thoughts in their mind and experiences from the past. We pray for those, oh God, who are struggling with the cares of life. We pray for those, oh God, who are lost in sin. We pray for those, oh God, who are, are battling and, and don't even see a way out of their situation. Father, today we pray in the name of Jesus that you would transform them by the renewing of their mind. Father, we pray for a change in their life, a change in their spirit, a change in their home, a change in their circumstances, a change in their situation. Father, we pray, oh God, that you would transform them by the renewing of their minds. Father, we pray that you would touch our thoughts. We pray, oh God, that you would show us how to think. We pray, oh God, that you would show us how to evaluate and how to discern and how to make judgment. Transform us, oh God, by the renewing of our mind. For we know that the thoughts that we have in our flesh and our carnal mind are not, oh God, equipped to lead us in the way that we should go. So Father, today we ask that you would change our mind, oh God. Change our thought processes, oh God. In the name of Jesus, help us to forget, oh God, those experiences from the past that will give us tunnel vision, oh God. Help us, oh God, to shake off the ungodly influences, oh God. Help us, oh God, oh Jesus, lead us in the right way that we should go. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will bind every stronghold, that you will come against every principality, and that you will bring every captive thought into the obedience of the knowledge of God. We pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you would change our minds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us to think things that are lovely, things that are honest, things that are pure, things that are just, things that are of a good report. Help us, oh God, with our thoughts, oh God. We pray for a change, oh God, as we go out of this year and transition into a new year, oh God. Lord, we pray that you would transform us by the renewing of our mind. Help us not to go into a new year with old thoughts, oh God. Help us not to go into a new place, oh God, still bound by the thoughts of our past, oh God. But Father, we pray today that you would transform us, Lord, by the renewing of our mind. Equip our minds with thoughts, oh God, that are elevated, oh God, to see the thoughts that you have for us, oh God. For you said, Lord, that you know the thoughts that you think towards us. They are of good and not of evil to bring us to an expected end, oh God. So Father, we pray, oh God, that you would renew our minds, Lord, that we would set our affections on things above and not on things of this world, oh God. Help us, oh God, with our thoughts, oh God. Let the words, oh God, of our mouth and the meditations of our heart let them be acceptable unto you, O oh God. Take charge of our thoughts, Jesus. We give them over to you, O oh God. Take complete control, O oh God. Now, Father, cover us, O oh God, as we go through these final days, O oh God. Keep us and protect us, O oh God. Strengthen us, O oh God. Keep a hedge of protection round about us, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give your name glory. We give your name honor. We celebrate you now for the transformation that's coming in our life. Thank you, Jesus, for the change. Thank you, Jesus, for the elevation. Thank you, Jesus, for a new beginning. We give your name praise this day. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless and to present us for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you on Thursday night.